See, macrolide antibiotics, particularly azithromycin, clarithromycin, erythromycin, these are the most commonly used macrolides, these three. But the prototype is erythromycin. It was extracted from streptomyces, erythromyces back in 1952. And now we have semi-synthetic derivatives in the form of clarithromycin and azithromycin, which are very, very commonly used all over the world by physicians. First, let us talk about erythromycin. Erythromycin, it has a broad spectrum. It's effective against gram-positive organisms like pneumococci, streptococci, staphylococci, and corinibacterium. And uh, especially when you have enough concentration, it's also effective against mycoplasma, legionella, chlamydia tachymatis, chlamydia cytosine. So helicobacter listeria and uh, also mycobacterium cancer and mycobacterium scrofulatium are also susceptible. So those are the gram-positive organisms. Coming to gram-negative organisms, Neisseria, Bordetella pertussis, Bordetella hensulae, Bordetella quintana, these are the etiological agents of cat scratch disease and uh, bacillary angiomatosis. So those are the uh, main organisms. Also, Teponoma pallidum, we can say. We can say Haemophilus influenza is somewhat less susceptible to erythromycin. So those are the gram-positive and gram-negative organisms but unfortunately, resistance is growing against erythromycin. Now, coming to the pharmacokinetics, erythromycin base is destroyed by stomach acid. So that's why we must administer erythromycin by enteric coated form. But it interferes, the food especially interferes with the absorption. The half-life of erythromycin is only 1.5 hours and uh, you don't have to adjust the dose for the renal function. And erythromycin is, uh, I mean, uh, when we think about clinical uses, let me give you the main clinical uses. It is the drug of choice in coronary bacterial infections like uh, diphtheria, coronary bacterial sepsis, and also erythrosma. So coronary bacterial infections, number one. Number two, chlamydial infections. Whenever you see chlamydial infection, it is a drug of choice. And uh, number three, community-acquired pneumonia, because it has a spectrum against uh, pneumococcus, mycoplasma, and uh, legionella, the most common causes of community-acquired pneumonia. We use erythromycin against community-acquired pneumonia. Number four is whenever there is penicillin allergy and uh, staphylococcus is there, if it is susceptible, you can use uh, erythromycin and also streptococci and pneumococci. And emergence of uh, erythromycin resistance, that's the problem. Group A streptococci and uh, pneumococci that causes the problems like pharyngitis, soft, uh, soft tissue infections, skin infections. That's making uh, erythromycin a less desirable choice. That's uh, unfortunately, that's due to the resistance that is emerging. The other thing is uh, as prophylaxis in endocarditis in before dental procedures. But nowadays we are using clindamycin because clindamycin is better tolerated than erythromycin. That's why erythromycin is largely replaced by clindamycin. The other use is with one gram of erythromycin, when you give it in combination with neomycin and canamycin, it's used in the preparation of uh, colon before preoperative preparation of colon. So the, those are the most important uses of erythromycin. And uh, the other use is erythromycin causes increased gastric motility. That's actually side effects. And we can use it. Uh, that's why we can use it in gastroparesis because gastroparesis is low, slow, slower motility of the GA tract. And uh, so the most commonly encountered uh, problem that makes, uh, that uh, uh, persuades us to discontinue is the gastrointestinal intolerance because erythromycin, it just disturbs and increases the gastric motility. That's why uh, many times we stop this, but 
Uh, fortunately, the same side effect will be useful when we treat patients with diabetic gastroparesis. Now, coming to toxicity, the most important point is erythromycin causes liver toxicity. It causes cholestatic hepatitis, uh, resulting in jaundice and uh, uh, increase in liver enzymes. Those problems happen whenever we use uh, erythromycin. That's why it increases with the dosage and when you re-administer the drug it causes the problem to increase. Now drug interactions. Drug interactions erythromycin it inhibits cytochrome P450 enzymes in the liver. That's why Medications like uh, theophylline, anticoagulant, cyclosporine, methylprednisolone, these drugs, they increase in concentration in the serum. And also, the other th drug is digoxin. Digoxin's concentration increases because it, um, erythromycin makes its concentration increase by inhibiting the cytochrome P450 enzyme. That's why you should always make sure that you are following digoxin levels when you put the patient on erythromycin. Now a few words about clarithromycin. Clarithromycin virtually identical to erythromycin and uh, but it is more active against uh, MAC, mycobacterium avium complex. So clarithromycin it has good activity against mycobacterium lepra and uh, toxoplasma gondii so clarithromycin, that's why, is desired by so many physicians nowadays. I mean, even more desirable than azithromycin because it penetrates the tissues so well and sometimes its concentration exceeds the serum concentration in tissues. It is metabolized in the liver and uh, a portion of it is also secreted in the urine and that's why dosage reduction is recommended in renal function. You see, when we talked about erythromycin, you don't have to reduce the dose in renal dysfunction, but uh, when it comes to clarithromycin, you need to keep an eye on the renal function, especially if creatinine clearance is less than 30 ml per liter, you need to uh, decrease the dose of uh, clarithromycin. Now, the most important point is there are three advantages to clarithromycin when compared to erythromycin. Number one, it has lower incidence of gastrointestinal disturbance. You remember, erythromycin causes so much gastrointestinal disturbance, but it causes less. Number two is it's low dose because it has such a long half-life. So it, you, you can uh, keep it like low, uh, low frequent scheduling. Number three is low cost. So lower incidence of GA motility and uh, lower scheduling and low cost makes it like clarithromycin is uh, made more, uh, I mean more physicians they like clarithromycin than azithromycin. And azithromycin is a very important medication tons and tons of it is prescribed by daily by primary care physicians and pulmonologists all over and uh, it has the good feature about azithromycin is it has such a long half-life sometimes it reaches like three days that's why you can just give 500 milligrams on day one and give 250 milligrams from day two to day four and that makes it a very compact schedule so it, its long half-life is another good good feature about it. Imagine treating a chlamydial urethral cervicitis like seven days of a doxycycline, but just one dose of one gram of azithromycin is sufficient to treat it. So it has a very very good feature. It is rapidly absorbed.